Recording in progress. Okay. Well, are we ready? Ready. You're all set? Check. Yep. Good evening. This is Steve Lionel, Vice Chair of the City of Nashua Zoning Board of Adjustment, and this is the July 12th, 2022 Zoning Board meeting. I'm filling in for Mary Ellen McKay, or our Chair, who cannot be with us tonight. This evening's meeting will be conducted in a hybrid format. The meeting is accessible in person in the third floor auditorium of Nashua City Hall, 229 Main Street, and via Zoom at the link posted in all public meeting agendas. Attendance via telephone is available using the Zoom connection details. Minutes of tonight's meeting, as well as audio and video recordings, will be available later at nashuanh.gov slash agenda center. Select Zoning Board of Adjustment. If anyone has a problem accessing the meeting, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. In the event that the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. The chair is in control of the meeting. To the extent practicable and advisable, the board will follow the procedures as identified in its bylaws. The applicant will present their case for 15 minutes, followed by questions by the board. Next, persons wishing to speak in favor or with questions or opposition will be asked to speak for up to five minutes each. If there are questions or opposition, the applicant will have five minutes to present a response. Finally, one and only one person with questions or an opposition will be permitted to speak again before the board deliberates and determines an outcome. City staff will monitor a timer visible on the room monitors and Zoom. The chair will notify speakers as time is expiring. If you are participating by Zoom and wish to speak when public input is requested, please use, use the raise hand option, which can be found under reactions on a computer or the more menu on a phone. The chair will call you in turn. Please use the lower hand option when done. Please mute your microphone until called to speak. And I'd ask that everybody in the audience please uh, mute your cell phones. Note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call. Tonight, we will be hearing requests for deviation from the National Zoning Code in the form of applications for special exceptions and variances. A special exception is a request that seeks permission to do something that the zoning ordinance permits only under special circumstances. To grant a special exception, five points of law are required to be met. These are outlined in the application and will be summarized in board motions. A variance is a request that seeks permission to do something that ordinance does not permit. Variances also have five points of law to be met, different from those for special exceptions. For the City of Nashua bylaws and the State of New Hampshire revised statutes, a minimum of three or more affirmative votes are required to approve any motion. The board will hear all scheduled cases if a quorum of three voting board members is present at this meeting, and we do have a quorum tonight. Any citizen has the right to contest the decision that this board makes. Should we make a decision that you believe is an error, you have the right to request a rehearing. A written rehearing request must be received by the City of Nashville Planning Department within 30 calendar days from the date of decision. Should this board not grant a rehearing request, you can file an appeal directly to the New Hampshire Superior Court. Please contact Mr. Falk of the Planning Department for more information. So for this meeting, we have the following full board members in attendance. Uh, we have myself, Steve Lionel, again, I'm in the vice chair. We have Mr. Jack Courier, who serves as our clerk. We have Mr. J.P. Boucher and Mr. Rob Shaw. And we have the following alternate member in attendance, Mr. Jay Mancara. I don't see any others on Zoom, so I guess that's it. Uh, in addition to the board members, we have with us Mr. Carter Falk, deputy planning manager, Ms. Kate Poirier, zoning coordinator, and I don't see Matt Sullivan. Okay, he's not here. So let us start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance for board members participating by Zoom, which there aren't any, uh, so I'm gonna skip that. Uh, okay, uh, Jack Courier. Present. J.P. Boucher. Present. Rob Shaw. Present. Jay Mancara. Present. And myself, Steve Lionel, I am present. Uh, since uh, we have four full board members and one alternate, uh, Mr. McCarra will be participating uh, in the discussion and the, and the voting for all cases. 
unless uh, one of the members recuses themselves from a particular case, and in which case that we have four board members, or three, depending. Mr. Falk, are there any changes to the agenda? Just the case for 7 Coliseum Avenue has been, uh, will not be heard tonight. That will be heard, heard at the next meeting on July 26th. Okay. So I will now read the first case into the record. And this is one that was uh, tabled from a previous meeting. Owner is James Cooper and Connor Feathers, address 302A and 302B Pine Street. Sheet 102, lot 179, requesting variance from land use code section 190-17E1 to exceed maximum driveway width, 24 feet permitted, no pavement existing, 48 feet proposed for a duplex condex where each unit is requesting 24 feet in width. This is in the RB Zone Ward 6. Is there somebody here to present the case? Right, thank you. Please uh, step up to the microphone. Uh, give your name and address for the record, and uh, you have 15 minutes to tell us what you'd like to do. Uh, I'm Connor Feathers from 302 Pine Street, Unit B. Uh, so we are requesting more than the allotted 24 feet uh, per your addendum. Uh, we're, due to the fact that we are operating as two separate properties, uh, we would like 40 feet of driveway width, which would be split up into a 24-foot section for 302A and a 16-foot section for 302B. Um, due to the, uh, the meeting that was approximately a month ago, uh, we've altered our design, which we believe meets the opinions of the board members, which was to make the appearance less like a parking lot and more as two separate individual uh, driveways. Um, and during the time in between the last meeting, we've talked to each of Butter, and they've all uh, said that they approve of our, our current design and uh, think that we should have the ability to do so. Hi, Heather Clark, 302A Pine Street. Um, I've submitted the additional pictures of surrounding neighborhoods um, along with the drawing for our new proposal and pictures of the front of our joining units to show what it looks like now prior to a driveway and feel it would look a lot better with pavement rather than dirt and sand. Um, and there are multiple properties on two cross streets right across from us on Nagel and Hunt Street that have excess or the same amount of driveway as us as well. Thank you. Okay. Do you have anything more to add to either of you? Not required. If, if you think your application is, stands for itself. Um, Sorry to cut in. I don't have the raise hand button here. I'm James Cooper, 302A Pine Street. Um, I'm just making my myself known. Thank you. Um, okay, you're on the telephone, so you couldn't see the presentation. Um, well, I hope. He's the applicant. I think he's, he's the applicant. The applicant so. hmm? I think he's the applicant. He's the applicant at 302A. Oh, is the app? Yeah. Is the app? I didn't hear that. Yeah. Okay. I'm Heather Clark. I'm his girlfriend, and I live with him at 302A, so okay. I'm here in person to represent, and I submitted all the the photos that me and James Cooper gathered together and he wrote the letter which is in the um, oh, I see. addendum. Okay, okay. That's fine. Um, so, but you are, you are done with your presentation? You have, um, that's, that's we, fine. We submitted everything in writing so I didn't know if you needed anything additional to what we wrote up. Well, Just let's see pleading our case of supporting that the surrounding properties have. Okay, uh, the board members may have questions for you. So, questions from the board, anybody? Mr. Shaw. And one thing I'm trying to understand is on the 302B side, where you are gonna have like kind of the jog out after. So, I, and I wasn't sure if you're saying it's 16 feet right now at the, essentially at the curb, and then it widens up, or is it 16 to kind of like way on that jog? Yep. Uh, Connor Feathers, 302B. Uh, so yes, at, on the drawing, there's 16 feet that's directly touching the, the road. Uh, there's a telephone pole at the, let's say, approximate tw uh, 18 foot mark, which is preventing uh, bringing that driveway all the way to the edge of the street. Uh, so 
I desire to have 20 feet as a telephone pole there, um, unless you want to move it. I, I'd love that. <laughs> but uh, I, I've been told that that's not a possibility, so I would just like that the, the line of that 20 foot span to be um, in line with the house. I believe that would look, look the best. Okay. Um, I have a follow up I want to ask uh, Mr. Falk. I'm assuming from the looks of this um, jog out that it's still going to be within the front yard setback, which means as I see it, it's, I think you're really asking for 24 feet on the left side and 20 feet. This on is the James right Cooper side. 302A plan. I don't mean oh, to cut yeah, in, yeah, but yeah, I, no, my phone no, keeps not. cutting out and I can't hear anything that's going on. I just wanted to make that known. My phone keeps, uh, the sound keeps cutting out, so I'm only getting like partial statement. Thank you. Uh, Connor Feathers, 302B. Uh, so in the original email that, uh, or the most recent email that uh, both Heather and Jim prepared, uh, we did have a statement in there saying that it was 20 feet, 16 feet. We weren't sure how to exactly um, propose that because of the telephone pole. So, the the, the issue I, I think Mr. Shaw is bringing up is that the um, the width requirement um, has to extend within the full front yard setback from the street, which is I, I think don't. That's Mr. Dalton, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, the, um, the driveway on 302A is 24 feet. That's a given. The one on 302B, while it is 16 feet at the public paved right of way, uh, as Mr. Feathers said, there's a telephone pole in the corner there, which you can see in the driveway. But if you go just north of the telephone pole, part of that driveway is 20 feet. So. I'm not sure exactly where the where the front yard setback is. I think it's that line going across. The dashed line. So. Okay. So 24. So, so, yeah. I think what you yeah by by the rules it would be you're really asking for the 44 feet. So I just okay. trying to get that kind of clarified uh, for us here. So. And you need my, to my mic is in front of me. <laughs> it's directly in front. Um, yeah, Mr. Falk. It, it's still okay. The advertisement was right. was requesting 48, and they're still under the advertisement, so it's still okay as far as our ad goes. Right. So yeah, I, and, and I understood that. I just want to make sure that for everybody involved, that just because of the way we define this, even, and I understand it's it's it, this stuff gets a little tricky in the details. But we understand what you're asking for. I think we just want to make sure we don't say we're going to prove you for 40 feet when you really technically need 44 feet. That, that's more the issue I see here right yeah. now. So. Okay. Yeah. However, um, we need to word that to make it accurate to the rules. I just we know it's uh, probably slightly odd because the telephone pole there. So right. that's. Well, the, the the your application says 24 feet for each unit. So as long as you are up to no more than 24 feet. In, on each of the driveways, then you're fine, according okay. to the application, assuming that we make the motion, I just, that I read it just from the application. Okay. So, but as has been said, the width, it, it has to be extended through the full front yard setback. So the fact that there's a notch where the telephone pole is doesn't matter. D do you understand that? Um, just, just for clarity, are you saying that we would have to request the the maximum distance. So in this case, it would be 20 feet that we are that I would be covering. Or are you saying that there has to be a continuous 24 feet? No, not that there has to be continuous okay. 24 feet. It, the what you're requesting and what you want to do is within what you're requesting. So that's okay. Okay. Yep. That's okay. Thank you for the clarity. But we, what we often see is people uh, they have 24 feet at the curb and then they have a swoop out to 30 feet or something like that uh, within five or six feet of the street and they don't ask for a variance for that and that's that's not allowed but you're not doing that you're okay okay thank you with this so we just wanted to make sure you understood the rules okay any other questions mr. Shaw did you have a follow-up you were done okay mr. Oh, yeah, I had a mr. mr. Courier yes and just on that notch out I, I mean I, I didn't know if you had thought of maybe curving it out from beyond the telephone pole. I mean, the, 
the design you have i don't know if you'd ever be using that front corner because you're going to be driving like if you're looking at your house you're always going to be driving in the driveway on the right hand side so it, to me that I, I didn't know were you planning on on using that or something it, to me it would just maybe be a little more natural to, to swoop it out it would still end up being a more incursion than 16 feet i realize that but i was just wondering about what your thought on that your design is yeah so uh i currently park two cars there mm -hmm. um the way that i had measured it out was i would need uh, slightly beyond the 10 foot setback where i kind of have it drawn uh, in order to have all four tires of that uh, left sitting car on there uh, when the paving is done i'll probably will smooth out the edges so it's not looking like just a block Mm -hmm. um, whatever makes it look the best. Okay, thanks. Sir. Any more questions from the board? Okay, you may sit down. Thank you. Is there anybody here in the room who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Uh, yes, sir, uh, step up to the lectern and uh, give us your name and address for the record and you have five minutes. Peter Mersini, uh, 1080 West Hollis Street, in Nashua. Um, I, I'm all for what he's proposing, and uh, I would just uh, recommend to him that he contacts the uh, utility company. They will move that pole if he insists on them move that pole. And uh, like you alluded to, sir, um, he may be able to continue the, uh, you know, a straight line to the curb to whatever maximum's permitted for him, but. Uh, you know, hallelujah, if he's trying to get his tires on the asphalt and uh, step out onto step out onto a walkable surface instead of some mud in the winter, um, I, I hope he has a fun time with it. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your observation, your comment. Anybody else in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Not seeing anybody, is there anybody on Zoom who wishes to speak in favor of the application? Not seeing or hearing anybody? Okay. Uh, is there anybody in the room who wishes, who has questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Right. Not seeing anybody. Is there anybody on Zoom with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? And I'm not seeing anybody there. And so I will then um, close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Mr. Mancara, your comments. Uh, I, I support the application. I, I think that the changes that were made since the last time we saw oh, sorry, uh, the, the changes that were made since the last time we saw this, I think, are a significant improvement. Uh, we do have two distinct um, properties, if you will, uh, with the Condex scenario on this. So for each, for each to have its own driveway, each of which would comply with our driveway requirements if they were separate lots. Uh, I, I, I think is reasonable, and the uh, creation of substantial grass strip in between, I think satisfies my concerns previously with that it not look like one giant parking lot. So I support the application. Thank you. Mr. Shaw. Yeah, I, I do as well now, and I pretty much just echo Mr. Nakara's comments. Thanks. Mr. Boucher. I also support the application for the reasons uh, spoken to already. Thanks. Mr. Courier. I uh, sound like a broken record, but I also support it uh, as articulated pretty clearly by Mr. Mancara. And uh, I'm going to say the same thing. This is Steve Lino, and uh, so I'm also in support. Uh, would somebody care to make a motion? Mr. Shaw, thank you. I'd like to make a motion on behalf of James A. Cooper and Connor Feathers, the owners at 302A and 302B Pine Street. Sheet 102, Law 179, the request is for variance from Land Use Code Section 190 dash 17 section E subsection 1 to exceed maximum driveway width 24 feet is permitted where no pavement is existing uh, 48 feet is proposed for a duplex slash condex where each unit is requesting 24 feet in width this is in the RV zone uh, the variance is needed for the applicant proposed uh, use of the property uh, given the special conditions of the property uh, this this is a, a condex arrangement uh, with uh, two uh, separate uh, dwellings and uh, the request is really for what would normally be allowed for a single family home uh, and it is uh, uh, consistent with that uh, 
the uh, it's within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. Uh, there's no uh, uh, belief that there's any adverse effect on surrounding parcel property values. It's not contrary to public interest, and substantial justice will be served. We'll note also that the uh, by the applicant's uh, modified uh, plan from the original request of essentially separating the uh, pavement, it does create uh, the appearance of two uh, distinct and very separate driveways. Uh, and also, I uh, will note that this, the applicant has <coughs> advised what they need for the request. Uh, so we'll be we'll <coughs> making the um, motion to support a 44-foot Allowance for this, where 24 feet would be, be 48 feet, wouldn't it? No, no we asked for 48. They're willing to go to reduce that to 44. Uh, this goes back to the originally. There was an original request that would have been a full 48 feet, with the modified request now. It's 24 and 20. This is going to be 24 here, and 20. Yeah. Okay. So uh, again, for a total of 44 feet. Where 24 feet would be associated with the 302A side and 20 feet with the 302B side. And uh, with that, I move to again approve this area of variance. Thank you. And Mr. Boucher, thank you for your second. Uh, I'm just going to. Hmm? Uh, JP Booth, second. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any discussion of the motion? Yes. I just uh, wanted to say while we didn't discuss it tonight, there was a lot of discussion on the first time about the stop sign uh, located right almost adjacent to the 302A property, which was why that unit was needing to have the driveway shifted to the right. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure it's, 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 on, microphone. It, it's on everyone's mind, it certainly is on mine, but that was what was also in this driveway design. Um, so the 302A unit is kind of to the center of the house or the structure. Well, normally the applicant would have it kind of in front of their, the left side, kind of like the 302B has over on the right side. So I just wanted to reiterate that discussion from the last meeting. Okay. I thought that was clarified by Mr. Falk that that was not an issue after all, that there was that concern. But I, I, in, a, in a way, I don't think it really matters to our decision yeah, here. So. Right. I know it had been brought up quite a bit, but I think um, our understanding was ultimately that that was not actually a factor uh, that played into what they could or couldn't do. So. Okay, thanks. Ready to vote? Yep. Mr. Mankara, how do you vote? Mr. Mankara votes in favor. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. And I, Mr. Lino, vote in favor. That's five to nothing. Uh, congratulations, your variance has been approved. Please be aware there's a 30 day uh, window of appeal. Please contact the planning department if you have any questions. Moving on to case number two. Owner is Jean McGinnis, Revocable Trust, address 38 Sanborn Drive. Sheet E, lot 458, requesting variance from land use code section 190-16, table 16-3, to encroach eight feet into the 30-foot required rear yard setback to construct a 14-foot by 16-foot family room addition. This is in the R9 zone, Ward 1. Uh, good evening. Uh, please give your name and address and tell us what you'd like to do. Hi, good evening. Yes, my name is Jean McGinnis. I live at 38 Sanborn Drive. And I, my family's growing, so I, with grandchildren, so I want to add a family room off the back of my house. And I have a fenced-in backyard, and there's a patio there. Um, instead of the patio, I want to make it a room, a four-season room. And it, they, it's 40 feet from the back of my house to the fence in the back of my yard. And this is going to be 16 feet. I want it to be 16 feet out. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm asking for six feet on the variance so that I can make a 14 by 16 room. I've contacted all the neighbors and no one has any problem with it. I contacted the back neighbors, especially because it would be in the backyard, but it's a, it's a ranch house. 
So it wouldn't even be, you know, the kid really even see it, but over the fence they could, but. Um, and I, don't, I have a, a contractor that's very well known, is uh, John, John um, Forcier, and he does beautiful work, so I don't think it'll be any, it will be beautiful. It won't be anything that will disrupt the neighborhood or look bad, for sure. Okay, do you have anything else to add? Not really. Okay, um, let's see if we have any questions from the board. Mr. Boucher. Uh, just a clarification, uh, your application stated that you were looking for uh, an eight foot uh, exception. Yeah, I, I don't know why, I don't see that on my application. Oh, I did, eight. Eight feet. I so only need six. And you only need six? I only need six. Okay, all right, that's fine. I just want to clarify what you yeah. wanted before. It, it, it's okay to, to actually use less than... Yeah, I don't know why I asked for eight. I did. I see yeah. it. It happens. <clears throat> Mr. Currier. On the uh, sketch you, we have in our application where it shows your 14 by 16 foot addition, perhaps it was just drawn by hand. Actually, Ms. Poirier has it up on the screen now, but the 14 feet by 16 feet at least to me it looks like that's kind of reversed it looks it like is, it's, it's, it is reversed so the, the, uh i want it 14 feet wide, wide 16 feet deep okay so i don't know um i got this from um the the person at um in the office she drew the map for me okay so i think she just got it mixed up okay and just i was just wondering is it was there um, f for the 16 feet of depth and 14 feet of width, if we want to call it that, mm -hmm. um, was there a consideration for trying to, you know, reduce the, the reduce the depth, maybe increase the width? Uh, yeah, just but it would block what, a window. You know, it would block a window, so I would not have any. I wouldn't be able to see out. Okay. So that's why it has. To, it can only be 14 feet depth okay I mean width so there's Sorry. an existing window in the back of the house kind of on there the right is hand it's side. like yeah there is okay all right thanks sure any more questions from the board not seeing anybody okay you may have a seat thank you very much is there anybody uh, here in the room who wishes to speak in favor of this application yep please uh, sir come up and uh, Give your name and address for the record. Again, gentlemen, Pete Massini, 1080 West Hollis Street here in Nashua. Um, I know R9 is really tight, and uh, not everybody has a benefit of, uh, you know, finding a bigger piece of property and starting over. So when you're getting to be in our age, uh, you know, and you got the grandbabies, hallelujah, if you can make space for them. I hope you all are generous and uh, if none of her immediate neighbors complains uh, uh, I, I wish you all luck with that thank you so uh, in favor yes anybody else in the audience uh, wishes to speak in favor no okay. anybody on zoom who wishes to speak in favor please use the raise hand feature if you do not seeing anybody okay if there's anybody in the audience with questions concerns or opposition not seeing anybody. Is there anybody on Zoom with questions, concerns, or opposition to this application? And not seeing anybody there. Okay. So I will close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Mr. Shaw, your comments? Yeah, I'm, I'm in support. I think uh, you know, basically there's not a lot of room to work with here. This, this uh, family room is a, a reasonable size. It's not a, it's not a excessively large uh, space that's being requested. We learned that there is a limitation of the window there as far as any sort of modification of it to make it perhaps a little more rectangular. Um, and I think really um, it's, a, it's a reasonable use, supported by the neighbors, and uh, it's a limited encroachment. So I'm in favor. Thank you. Mr. Boucher. Uh, I'm also in support of the application for the reason Mr. Shaw spoke to. Thanks. I have nothing to add. Mr. Currier. 
Um, I was struggling with the application, just trying to look at it from the point of view of what's the uniqueness of the property versus the need of the applicant. Um, that's why I questioned about the window, but uh, or questioned why it couldn't be, say, more rectangular. Uh, you know, so I guess uh, I'd just like to hear a few more comments, uh, opinions on it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mancara. Um, I, I, I do appreciate Mr. Courier's comments. Uh, I, I support the application mainly because it, it is a fairly small lot. Uh, granted, it has that in common with all the other lots um, in the neighborhood. Um, it, it does appear that uh, a number of them, though, probably do encroach uh, on a setback in, in, in some way. Uh, many of them do appear to have additions over time. But overall, uh, it's a modest house. The addition that's proposed is fairly modest. And for, from what I can tell, there's really no way to add on to this house um, without needing relief in some way. You could uh, need, you know, maybe four feet instead of six if you have um, adjusted the dimensions, although that might be difficult. But the dimensions for what's being proposed are, are really pretty modest. So getting much smaller than that, I, I, I think, is a struggle. You can't put it to the side. You can't put it to the rear. So. Um, although I did struggle with it a bit, I, I think for those reasons, I, I support the application. Thank you. Um, I, I support the application. Uh, my, I think that the encroachment is relatively minor, uh, given the, the distance between the house and, and, the, and the rear. And uh, yeah, my, I have a screen porch that's exactly the same size as this one. Uh, is it big enough? Yes, although mine, mine is 16 wide and 14 deep. But um, uh, So I, I'm in support of the application. Uh, Mr. Carrier, did you have any further comments at this time? Uh, no, the addition on my house in the back is 15 by 15, and that's plenty big enough for, for, for me, us. Okay. But that's nothing to do with this application. Yeah. <laughs> Personal experience. Okay. Uh, ready to vote? Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Oh, didn't make a motion. Oh, excuse yeah, me. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're right. You're right. You know, I'm out of practice here. Okay. Would somebody care to make a motion? Mr. Shaw, thank you. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to make a motion uh, on behalf of uh, Gene F. McGinnis Revocable Trust. Uh, owner at 38 Sanborn Drive, Sheedy, lot 458, uh, requesting a variance from land use code section 190-16, table 16-3, to encroach eight feet into the 30-foot required rear yard setback to construct an attached 14-foot by 16-foot family room addition. This is in the R9 zone. Uh, the variance is needed for the applicant's proposed use of the property, uh, given the special conditions of the property. Primarily, uh, the, to add on uh, any reasonable amount of living space uh, to the property. Uh, it appears that there would be um, a need to go into one of the setbacks short of perhaps doing something like a 10-foot uh, deep addition across the full back of the, the property, which uh, we already know would, it would already block at least one window and perhaps more windows because we didn't even cover that. But I think it it's, uh, seems like an unreasonable way to um, add some living space, uh, whereas the request is for a fairly modest, uh, although advertised and requested as eight feet, uh, we learned that it's really actually only a six foot uh, need uh, for that, uh, that variance uh, relief. It's within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. Uh, it will not adversely affect property values of surrounding parcels. It's not contrary to public interest. Uh, substantial justice will be served. Uh, there is support from the neighbors including the, the rear neighbor uh, that will be most uh, potentially affected by uh, that uh, encroachment into the setback. Uh, so for those reasons, I move to approve this area of areas. Thank you. And Mr. Boucher, thank you for your second. Now we can vote. Uh, discussion? Uh, discussion of the motion? I'm sorry, was that for six or eight feet? He made the motion for eight. Because I, I think the motion should be for six, which is what the testimony is. Yeah, I, I was trying to allude to that, but I, did, I mean, basically I read it in, you know, we read in what's advertised, right? But 
I noted that the applicant only needs six feet, but I didn't state that explicitly. So uh, we can t document that as for the actual approval is for a six foot encroachment. Great, I'll document that. Yep. Thank you. Okay. And you're still okay with the second. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Mr. Boucher agrees that the motion can be for six feet. Very good. Yep. Now are we ready to vote? Okay. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. Mr. Mincara, how do you vote? Mr. Mincara votes in favor. And I, Mr. Lionel, vote in favor. That's five to nothing. Congratulations. Your variance has been approved. There's a there's a 30-day window of appeal. Please contact the planning department if you have any questions. Okay, so we move on to case number three. The owner is Property Possible, Inc. The address is 49 Buckmeadow Road. Sheet C, lot 18, requesting special exception from land use code section 190-15 to work in the 75-foot prime wetland buffer of Old Ridge Road wetlands and in a 40-foot critical wetland buffer to construct an 11-unit residential conservation subdivision development along with associated improvements. This is in the R40 zone, Ward 5. Is there somebody here to present this case? Uh, there is so somebody on, on Zoom. Zoom, okay. And please give your uh, name and address for the record and uh, tell us what you'd like to do. Uh, sure, hopefully you, you all can hear me okay. Uh, my name is Tom Zajac. I'm a civil engineer with Hainer Swanson, 3 Congress Street here in Nashua. Here tonight representing the applicant property possible uh, property located at 49 Buck Meadow Road. Um, just want to confirm you can hear me okay. I was having a little bit of issues with, with hearing you folks on the previous cases. Yeah, we, we can hear you, although your volume is a little low, so if maybe you could speak closer to the microphone, it would help. Okay, pull it up closer and I'll try yelling a little louder. That, that's good. Okay. Uh, so we're here tonight seeking a special exception to disturb uh, roughly 92,518 square feet of wetland buffer areas associated with a proposed 10 unit uh, project to be known as Buck Meadow uh, Estates, as I mentioned on 49 Buck Meadow Road. Um, I'd just like to provide you with a brief uh, presentation to introduce the project and to address a couple of the uh, special exception criteria and then be happy to answer any questions uh, from the board. Uh, so the existing site is 49 Buck Meadow Road, uh, located in the southwest part of the city, Map C, Lot 18. It's a roughly 10-acre site uh, located in the R40 residential zone. The site is abutted by residential uh, uses to the north, east, and south, and uh, undeveloped land to the west. Our client uh, purchased the property from Ernest and Constance Gagnon Family Trust in September of 2021. Uh, the Gagnon family has owned uh, this property and uh, adjacent properties in the area for many years. Uh, the majority of the site is currently developed or exists as maintained lawn areas. There is an existing single family dwelling located in the northeast portion of the property along Buck Meadow Road. Uh, in the rear of the property, there are also a number of outbuildings, sheds, trailers, and material stockpiles associated uh, with a uh, tree service business. Access to the site is provided via two driveways off Buck Meadow, one to the northerly side of the house and one to the southerly side of the house, which then leads down to the lower or rear portions of the property. The existing house is currently serviced by a private septic system, well, and propane, as well as overhead electric telecommunications utilities. The topography of the site generally slopes in a westerly direction uh, from Buck Meadow Road uh, to the wetlands located in the rear of the property. Uh, speaking of the wetlands, they were flagged as shown on our plans by the projects Certified wetland scientist Brendan Quigley of Gove Environmental Services last fall and subsequently surveyed uh, by our office. Uh, there's a large wetland area along the westerly portion of the site that is associated 
with the Old Ridge Road Prime Wetland Complex. Uh, the limit of the prime wetland is fairly well defined out in the field, which is the drainage ditch that extends along the back rear of the property. These uh, wetland areas carry with them an associated 75-foot wetland buffer. Additionally, there is a farm pond and a small, uh, two small fingers of wetland that extend into the site along the northerly property line that we have determined would not meet the prime wetland criteria. Therefore, those wetlands have an associated 40-foot critical wetland buffer. So we've got a mix of 75 and 40 foot wetland buffers. I'll, I'll, I'll discuss the, uh, the wetland buffers uh, more in a second. With regards to the proposed project, as, as you can see before you here, uh, it's being proposed to construct a 10 unit single family detached residential development up, upon this property to be known as Buck Meadow Estates. Uh, we've chosen a cluster style development and it'll be it'll be uh, moved forward in accordance with section 190 40 uh, the conservation subdivision regulations as listed in the National Land Use Code. Units will be on a single common lot and will be under a condominium form of ownership. Open space will be protected and maintained by the condominium association. Access to the site will be provided via a new 400 foot private street to be known as Cold Brook Circle, which will gain access roughly in the same proximity where the Southerly Driveway exists today. The new homes will be serviced by on-site private septic systems. Uh, water, by Penichuk Water Works, we're looking to extend water uh, down from the intersection of Buck Meadow Road and Ridge Road, which is about 1,000 feet to our south, and bring water up the street to this development. Also on-site propane and underground electric and telecommunications utilities. Other site improvements will include landscaping, site lighting, and stormwater management. So just taking a step back, uh, really our overall approach in designing a project like this is uh, first to look at the land, what the land gives you as it relates to soils, topography, and wetlands, and then try to determine what the highest and best use is for that uh, available developable land. Uh, regarding use, this property is owned residential, and as you know, there is a critical housing shortage, not only in the city of Nashville, but statewide. Uh, careful consideration has been made to design a project which balances uh, the increased proposed density, while also protecting the wetland areas and natural resources of this site by working with the existing topography and trying to keep the proposed development areas focused in the northerly and easterly portions of the site. Well, as part of this project, we are seeking to disturb approximately 92,518 square feet of wetland buffer area. It's shown patched in yellow on the, on the plan before you. Uh, there are no wetland, uh, direct wetland impacts as uh, proposed as part of this project, uh, just buffer impacts. Uh, it is important to note that the vast majority of these proposed buffer impacts are related to the restoration and revegetation of previously disturbed buffer areas, specifically in the rear portion of the site. Uh, the proposed buffer restoration effort in general would include the removal of the existing trailers, sheds, equipment and material stockpiles within the previously developed buffer, uh, removal of existing gravel drives and about six inches of existing topsoil. We would then uh, loam and seed those restoration areas uh, with two different conservation seed mixes. Uh, once the vegetation is established, uh, these rest, restored buffer areas will uh, not be mowed or maintained so they can re, uh, really revegetate and grow back naturally. Wetland buffer posts and placards will also be installed along the buffer lines to ensure these areas are protected. Uh, we spent a considerable amount of time working with the Conservation Commission over the last few months. I appreciate their time and help in, in working together to come up with a plan uh, that uh, works for all parties. This included making requests and modifications to the house layouts and eliminating a previously proposed 11th unit uh, in order to address some of their comments. Uh, and we did receive uh, their favorable recommendation at their meeting last week. Uh, Mr. Chair, as you know, uh, under Section 190.115 of the National Land Use Code, a special exception is required to alter a wetland buffer. 
A special exception is, a, is an allowed use subject to meeting the five criteria points as outlined in 190-134F. In addition, there are additional special criteria that must be met as outlined in 190-115B and C. Um, so I would just like to go through some of those criteria points now. Uh, so criteria number one, uh, the requested use is listed as a special exception in the use matrix or is permitted as a special exception by another provision in this chapter. Uh, section 190, 115 of the National Land Use Code states, a special exception is required to alter a wetland or wetland buffer. Criteria two, the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impairment of pedestrian safety. Uh, my testimony is that the proposed wetland uh, buffer impact will not create a traffic concern or repair, uh, impair pedestrian safety. Uh, criteria three, the requested use will not overload any public water, drainage, or sewer system, or any other municipal system to such extent that the requested use or any developed use in the immediate area or any of the other areas of the city will be unduly subjected to hazards affecting health, safety, or the general welfare. Uh, it's our opinion that the proposed buffer impact will not overload or adversely impact any municipal system or be detrimental to the health, safety, or general welfare of the city of Nashville residents. Criteria four is related to any special regulations for the use set forth in this article. Um, my testimony is that we comply with the special regulations of the land use code as outlined in section 190, 115 B and C in the wetland section. Uh, these are addressed in detail in our application package. Uh, for the sake of time, I was not gonna read through each of these individually, but I'm certainly happy to address uh, each of those if the board has any questions or comments. Criteria number five, the requested use will not impair the integrity or be out of character with the district or immediate neighborhood in which, within which it's located not be detrimental to the health, moral, welfare of the city, uh, residents of the city. So my testimony is, in general, the overall project will maintain the integrity and character with this area as this type of development is an allowed use in the zone and is keeping with other residential uses in this portion of the city. Specifically, once constructed, the disturbed wetland buffer areas will not impact any abutting properties and will not be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare of the residents of the city. In fact, it's my opinion that the proposed restoration of these previously disturbed buffer areas will only benefit the abutting properties and the view shed from Buck Meadow Road. So in summary, Mr. Chair, uh, we believe our request is reasonable and conforms to the intent of the Natural Land Use Code. The design of the project seeks to minimize impacts to wetlands, buffers, and other natural resources of the site. The proposed wetland buffer impacts are needed to redevelop the property in a responsible manner and will provide a significant improvement compared to the previously disturbed buffer areas that exist today. As I mentioned, we did receive a favorable recommendation from the Conservation Commission. Uh, we've re reviewed the approval letter uh, dated uh, July 5th. Uh, we certainly have no issues with uh, the conditions as outlined uh, in the letter, uh, with the exception of suggesting that item 1B uh, be further clarified. Um, so the wording as written is copied verbatim from my letter uh, to Mr. Sullivan, which included uh, an accidental omission of the last part of that line, 1B. The way it reads now, it's, it just says, requirement that all wetland buffer areas remain. Um, the intent was really to, to read something similar to requirement that all wetland buffer areas remain in their natural state upon completion of the proposed restoration. So the intent there was just to make sure that the future uh, condominium association was, was aware that uh, you know there should be no further disturbance, mowing or maintenance of, of those areas. Um, I believe one of the commissioners brought up that, uh, that uh, issue at the Carmicom meeting. So I just wanted it to bring to the board's attention and certainly would defer to the board or staff if you wanted to make any corrections on the fly to that wording of, of 1B. Uh, other than that, we're certainly all set with, with that letter as, as written. Um, so in closing, we respectfully seek your approval tonight, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the board? Mr. Courier. Uh, just to clarify, our application says 11 units, and I'm assuming that's because you put in the application prior to completing deliberations with the CONCOM, and that the application now is, is essentially for 10, even though it's stated 11 in, in the advertisement. Is that right? Correct. The, the, project, the project as proposed is, is a 10-unit project, and the amount of disturbance is 92,518. So both those numbers slightly changed, and it is due, uh, as you mentioned, to, to some of that uh, coordination with the Common Com uh, leading up to our last meeting. And just another question. I was curious, so there'll be a, like a sewer pump on the lower portion of the property, and that'll pump the sewer up to like a, a leaching field and septic somewhere on the upper end or where about on the property will that, I guess the leach, will it be a leach field and a septic tank on the upper end? Correct. Okay, there's the plan. So uh, again, 10, 10 units, uh, units one, two, eight, nine, and 10, the five units closest to Buck Meadow Road uh, are intended to all have individual septic systems. Uh, and then units three, four, five, uh, six, and seven, with the five on the low side around the cul-de-sac, will all pump up the hill to a shared septic system where uh, the cursor is there between units uh, two and three. Oh, and that's okay. both based on uh, some setback criteria as well as uh, the soils in the lower portion of the site. Okay, thank you. Any more questions from the board? Not seeing any, okay. Uh, anybody in the room who wishes to speak in favor of this application? I have some questions for the Well, questions will come in a moment. Do you wish to speak in favor of the application or do you have questions? No, I don't. You have questions, okay. Uh, we'll get to that. Anybody on Zoom who wishes to speak uh, in favor of the application? Not see anybody. Is there anybody in the room with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Okay, uh, ma'am, uh, come up and give your name and address for the record. Uh, and you have five minutes to tell us what you'd like. Thank you. My name is Lisa A. Law. I reside at 25 Pelham Street here in Nashua. My question for you is this. You said that um, Nashua has um, a home deficiency for people. How much of those 10 units are gonna be for low income housing? And my second question is, did you, when you went to about the wetlands, did you consider the animals that live there and how much wetlands and woods Nashua has lost in all the construction that has gone on in the past 20 years? Okay, we'll have the uh, applicant speak to those Thank you. questions uh, at the time. Okay, uh, next, sir, I saw your hand up. Uh, you had questions, concerns, yes. or opposition. Please give your name and address. And, and my name is Lawrence Arts. Seven please Fountain. speak up to the, get up to the microphone. My name is Lawrence Arts, 7 Fountain Lane in Nashua. Uh, I am, me and my wife are the beneficiaries of the property across the street on 48 Buck Meadow Road. I have concerns over the, the entrance way to the, I actually, I'm, in, I'm like opposed to the overall project because it's just gonna bring more people over there and, and all that, but that's beside the point. The main concern I have is that the driveway of that property at 48 Buck Meadow Road across the street, it's at the, it's right after a hill where lots of vehicles come down Buck Meadow Road and it is extremely difficult to pull out of that driveway without taking your life into your hands. And that driveway, the excess road is gonna be at the peak at, of that, the, you know, at the peak of that hill. And that's gonna make it a nightmare to pull out of the driveway at 48 Buck Meadow. And uh, the other question I have is the disturbance of the wetlands. That uh, the Buck Meadow Road property, the 48 Buck Meadow Road property has well and septic. Is a hundred foot, a two hundred foot uh, artesian well that's uh, supplying the fresh water for the house, and uh, I'm concerned about the contamination of the uh, of the groundwater. Um, should uh, something happen to uh, 
to the septic systems or whatever for the added um, the added residences, you know, the added uh, septics or, and the disturbance of the wetlands, how it will affect the, uh, the operation of the well. Okay. Do you have anything else? Um, that's all I can think of right at the moment here. But uh, the main concern is, is, the, is the layout of the street with that, with that hill there. That's, I, I've had an issue for, for 40 years pulling out of that driveway there, and it's like you take your life in your hands, and the added traffic just makes things much worse. And I think that having the entranceway right there at that top without having some kind of an improvement done, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be disastrous. Okay, thank you. A uh, uh, question? Yeah, I, so your concern about the driveway, the current entrance, I, mm -hmm. I think I heard you say that's for your property at 48? Yeah, 48 Buck Meadow Road has a, we, and we pushed for getting a blind driveway sign put there. We, we pushed for years and years to have a blind driveway sign, but you know, everybody ignores it. They come flying down that road and you come up over that hill and go down and the driveway is right as soon as you start seeing the cars. We have to basically, when you pull out at night, stop, read the wires and look for the headlights reflecting off the wires and, and pull out, right? And, and in the daytime, you just have to open your window. You have to listen to tire noise to see if there's a car coming and then gun it before somebody comes up over the top of that hill and uh, potentially cause a bad accident. There was a number of times where I got near misses coming out of that uh, driveway. Okay. Do you know how your driveway at 48 lines up with the proposed driveway at 49 because because I don't it's not on this okay plan, uh, 49 is to the south of that this, um, and then you get the driveway there's an existing road right there that Ernie Gagnon had when he would bring his trucks in and out of there back when he was living there um, if you go north on Buck Meadow Road maybe about 200 feet 100 feet, 200 feet, I don't know, it's kind of hard to gauge, but it does like the crest of the hill, and then you come down, and as you're passing the crest on the opposite side of the street is the driveway of 48 Buck Meadow Road that uh, is right there. And it's very blind. I mean, a lot of the cars come up over that hill, and uh, they're right on top of you. And the added traffic, I'm concerned about that added traffic with those uh, 11 units added down there in the, on the Gagnon property. Okay. Thanks. Is there anybody else in the room with questions, concerns, or opposition? Okay. Is there anybody on Zoom with questions, concerns, or opposition? Okay. Not seeing any. Uh, Mr. Zajac, if you would please uh, come back, and you have five minutes to respond specifically to the questions that were asked. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, Tom Zajac, civil engineer with Peener Swamp. Uh, I had a little trouble hearing the names, uh, so I apologize for that, but I did hear the comments. Um, so I do think, Mr. Chair, that some of these comments, uh, obviously our, our application is for a special exception for wetland buffer impacts. Uh, I'm not so sure that some of the comments that were made uh, are related to, to that application and, and may be more appropriate for, for the planning board as it relates to uh, traffic and uh, site distance concerns on Buck Meadow Road, as well as uh, whether this project will include uh, low-income housing. Um, I will say that um, I agree that Buck Meadow Road is, is, a, is a challenging road. Of course, uh, the city of Nashua is uh, right about to build a brand new middle school that's gonna, that's gonna connect a little further north on, on Buck Meadow Road. Um, we don't think that our project being 10 units is gonna significantly impact that road uh, in a negative manner as was represented. We did take time and careful consideration in terms of where we would site this new street, uh, which is at the southerly, the existing southerly driveway for 49 Buck Meadow. If you stand out there, uh, that's really one of the only spots along this street where you have really good site distance in both ways, given that it's at an existing high point and it is on the outside of that curve, as opposed to uh, the gentleman who lives at, at 48, of Buck Meadow, uh, whose 
driveway is a little further north is uh, has less sight distance and is on the inside of that curve. There's a lot of vegetation and, and, and topography along the inside of that curve that would limit sight distance from his driveway. Uh, but again, I think some of the, the traffic concerns are more appropriate uh, for the planning board. Um, there was some talk about uh, wetland disturbance. I, I do want to clarify uh, that we are not proposing any impacts uh, to the wetlands themselves. Our proposal is, is based on or is related to a wetland buffer impacts with the vast majority of that being uh, really restoration and improvement of existing buffer areas. So my testimony uh, before you here tonight is uh, given the revegetation of these large buffer areas that are currently disturbed and being used, uh, as well as there's gonna be a decrease in, in uh, runoff based on a decrease in impervious area. So we're gonna be improving things from a stormwater management perspective. That's more of a planning item, but uh, certainly my testimony would be that the result of this project and the wetland buffer impacts and restoration would result in a significant in improvement uh, to the wetlands and the wetland buffer habitat areas. Okay, thank thank you. you. Okay. Uh, one and only one of the people with questions, concerns, or opposition uh, may come up and, if they choose to, and uh, have five minutes to speak to uh, Mr. Zajac's response. Or you may rest. All right, uh, sir, again, give your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes to respond specifically. Okay, Lawrence Art 7, Fountain Lane, Nashua, New Hampshire. Um, I disagree. Uh, I, I still disagree about the uh, the, the access road. Um, if you if you see from my perspective, when you're pulling out of my driveway, and uh, I uh, recommend that uh, somebody actually pull out of that driveway and see exactly what I'm talking about um, to get a feel as to exactly what I'm talking about. Um, like I said, if there was some, if you do modification to the talk. talk the tachometer, whatever that is. Yes, that's I right. Can't, I can't say it. The uh, tachometer, top, top offer three, whatever it is. I the, the level of the land. If that was leveled down so we have a um, better view of the road with that, with that entranceway there so we can see cars coming out of there, it may not, it may not be as bad of an issue, but as of right now, um, that's just gonna, it's just gonna exacerbate the problem. You know, as far as being able to pull out of the driveway, and I, I don't wanna get into a car wreck pulling out of there. I mean, I was able to survive it for a long time and, you know, pulling out of that driveway all the time. That that, that property is uh, is the estate of Elaine Lavoie. That's my mother, that was my mother-in-law who passed away several years ago. And so we are basically in control of that property. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I will comment that that is, that is indeed is a planning board issue. Um, we're considering the, the wetlands uh, buffer impact specifically. So uh, things like sight lines uh, for driving are not something that we're going to be talking about tonight. But you can certainly raise that uh, to the planning board when they discuss this plan. If Will it I goes, get if it goes I, forward. Would I get notice of that? I yes. believe mm -hmm. yes. Every, every abutter would get notice. Every abutter notified. would get notice. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, at this point, I will close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Mr. Boucher, your comments. I'm in favor of the application. Um, again, um, we, we as a board see these requests um, regularly. Uh, I know it's sometimes, it is uh, sometimes challenging for people who, who come look at this and uh, kind of try to understand what's, what's going on, what's being asked for. Uh, again, um, the work here is being done in in the buffer zone, not actually in the wetland. So it's in the it's in the protected zone, um, so to speak. And again, as testified, um, this property will be left in better condition than than it was found. So again, I think that's just a net benefit for um, all of Nashua and the citizens of Nashua. Um, so um, with that, I'm going to support the application. I, again, we're just here for the for the wetlands, uh, to work in the wetland um, buffer area. 
um, and that's what I approve. And, and I do, again, to comment, uh, we're not here for the site, for the, for the driveways and, and the issues on, on Buckland Road, uh, but I travel that road like we all do uh, occasionally, and I know exactly what the uh, butter is talking about, and I think that uh, obviously not only this project, I don't think this project is the, the mainstay. There's also going to be a lot of traffic from the new school, so I think those are things uh, that need to be addressed at the planning board stage to make this road more safer for the citizens of Nashua. So with that, I'm going to support the application. Thank you. Mr. Courier. Yeah, I, I, in summary, I, I'm in support. I just wanted to add a little more to what Mr. Boucher said. And, you know, uh, most of the buffers, well, again, just to reiterate, there's there's no wetland impact here. That, and and the wetlands were, were created, most of those were created. The big pond was created by the previous owner, you know, decades ago. Uh, and the buffers in their current state are not doing much good for, for the habitat or the wildlife because they're in, they're in very bad shape. And if this plan goes forward and the buffers are, are I don't want to say, kind of uh, moved around and covered back over and then revegetated, it'll be a stable, permanent state that's ultimately better for the habitat and the vegetation, albeit there'll be 10 houses there that aren't there now. But a lot of the, those structures in the existing house will be gone. But I do concur with the applicant that overall the buffer situation here would be improved if this work were done. And that's what's in front of us tonight. And um, I also concur that on the other side of Buck Meadow, even though it's not before us tonight, that's a challenging driveway. Uh, and I, it, while again, we're only here for the wetlands exception. Uh, the proposed driveway here, I think, is at the ideal spot because it's 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 at the best view shed looking left and right. Uh, although that's not before us tonight, but I, I I think that was part of the design that I just wanted to say I, I think is 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 a good design that we have before us. But anyway, for, as far as the, the wetland buffer disturbance before us uh, this evening, uh, I'm I'm in favor of that. Thank you, Mr. Mancara. I also support the application for the reasons stated, and this is a developed property. The impacts are almost entirely within areas that are already developed. The property is, you know, has several existing buildings, trailers, etc., throughout it. Uh, and I also just add that the uh, uh, project has the unanimous support of the Conservation Commission with conditions. Thank you. Mr. Shaw. Yeah, I'm in support as well, pretty much echoing all the previous comments. And I, I live very close to this area, and I even know what it's like to walk on uh, Buck Meadow Road, which is even more taking your life in your hands. Uh, so I think, I mean, I have concerns about the road, about what happens regarding the new middle school, uh, and as we get increased housing uh, in the area. Uh, so hopefully there will be measures taken to address that. I think anything that is believed that this property will impact that, though, is definitely the planning board oversight. I do feel like especially back to just like the actual wetland impact and all that, I do see this as very much a net positive, a restoration. That even, you know, I do think we try to at least consider the overall kind of aspect of a proposal like this because it, it essentially begs the question, okay, there's wetland buffer work that needs to be done to support this other action. So I think we do try to at least have some understanding and context without getting into the details of like purview of the planning board or that kind of thing. But I do think it's important that we have a general sense of, okay, there's a reasonable request of what's going on here. How does it all fit together? So, but when it really comes down to it, I see this as a, a net positive, especially when it comes to wetland buffers. And uh, I'm in support of it along with the the stipulations and requirements that the CONCOM has provided. Thank you. Uh, I'm also in support of the application. You know, I, I agree with my colleagues that this is uh, a net improvement to the property. We uh, spent quite a bit of time on, regarding this property uh, with a previous owner, and uh, you know, the current condition is uh, not uh, amenable to wildlife, and I think that uh, uh, the wetlands work here is going to improve the buffer. And uh, as Mr. Shaw says, uh, improve the, the quality uh, of the wetlands. So um, I'm in favor of it. Uh, 
Uh, somebody care to make a motion? Mr. Boucher. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the special exception for property possible incorporated owner 49 Buck Meadow Road, Sheet C, Lot 18, requesting special exception from Land Use Code Section 190-115 to work in the 75-foot prime wetland buffer of Old Ridge Road wetlands and in a 40-foot critical wetland buffer to construct a 10-unit residential conservation subdivision development along with associated improvements in the R40 Zone Ward 5. We find that it is listed in the table of uses. We find that it will not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. We find that it will not overload public water, drainage, or sewer, or other municipal systems. We find that all special regulations are fulfilled. We find that it will not impair the integrity or be out of character with, with the neighborhood or be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare of the residents. Uh, the, the wetland special conditions uh, are being met by, uh, as attested to by the applicant. Also, um, we'll also reference the favorable recommendation by the Conservation Commission on July 5th. And also, I would like to um, just amend the, uh, one, the, the, there are seven special conditions. The second special conditions, or letter B, um, I just want to put in a record that I'd like to amend that um, to, uh, to be, uh, to, to read how it was articulated by the applicant and I think was added in, in maybe not exact words. Um, there was a requirement that wetland buffer in, air, in buffer areas remain and added uh, in somewhat uh, said uh, in their natural state after restoration. But again, I'm going to refer back to the minutes of the meeting uh, to exactly articulate what the applicant uh, had stated there. So uh, just that addition to the uh, Conservation Commission uh, seven, um, uh, seven recommendations they made, seven stipulations. Uh, the second stipulation is being adjusted. And with that, I make a motion to approve the special exception. Thank you. Mr. Shaw, thank you for your second. Any discussion of the motion? Uh, Mr. Courier. I just had a, in the stipulation I'm recording here, it's again for the, the, the July 5th National Conservation Commission letter, stipulation 1B, the addition of, uh, the addition of in in their, their natural, natural state, state after, after restoration. restoration. Yep, that's what yeah. I got. So, okay, I'm fine with that's that. It. Ready to I vote? Concur, yeah. Okay. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. Mr. Mancara, how do you vote? Mr. Mancara votes in favor. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. And I, uh, Mr. Delano, vote in favor. It's five to nothing. Uh, congratulations, your special exception has been approved. Uh, again, there's a 30-day window of appeal. Uh, please contact the planning department if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to case number four. Owner is Peter Machini. Address 1080 West Hollis Street. Sheet D, Lot 41, requesting variance from Land Use Code Section 190-264. For accessory use area, 40% allowed, 75% existing, 164% proposed to construct an attached one-story, 34-foot by 34-foot garage addition on the rear of an existing detached garage. This is in the R30 Zone Ward 5. Uh, okay, I see you've come up to the lectern, so please... Uh, Walk us through your application. Give your name and address for the record, please. Well, uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Or actually, it's evening now. Uh, my name is Peter Massini. I reside at 1080 West Hollis Street with my wife, Dalila, in the audience. And uh, we're uh, applying for a variance such that we can uh, continue with the construction of a garage um, extension onto the current garage that we have. Uh, when I bought the property here in Nashua, uh, I saw the property with quite a decent amount of land. This particular property has uh, 2.3 acres. Uh, the property was in a great state of disrepair. It was foreclosed on the previous owner. Uh, the bank then auctioned it off. And uh, over the past decade, uh, my wife and I have literally reconstructed the whole residents uh, one room at a time as funds allow 
uh, but I'm recently retired from federal service after almost 35 years, and my, my life's hobby is uh, uh, classic cars. So I'm an avid classic car collector, and uh, now I finally have some time uh, to get busy with wrenching on them and restore them back into serviceable condition. Uh, other vehicles that I own are uh, out in the weather right now, and uh, the collectible ones are deteriorating. Um, it's, it's, it was initially my intention to build a concrete uh, foundation and, and have a, uh, a, a carport, if you will, a covered carport. Uh, however, after my concrete guys poured the foundation, of, of which is already constructed, the 34 by 34 permit was filed shortly after I retired in 2021. Uh, but my uh, contractor couldn't perform until April of this year. So uh, upon having the foundation put in, I was told that, hey, if you don't cover this and close it into the weather, the uh, water and ice is gonna spall and crack all your concrete that you just put down. So you might wanna consider enclosing it as far as a garage instead of a covered carport. So with that, I contacted the planning and zoning departments and they said uh, being it's an accessory use structure that uh, I need to file for a variance and so there before you today is said request for variance so that I can com complete the construction of my 34 by 34 garage extension onto the existing extension. I've articulated that well enough. Uh, I do have an 11 by 17 drawing. If any of the board members would like a, a larger drawing, uh, I did submit that as well. Um, is, it, is it similar to the, <coughs> exactly. the drawing that's in the yeah. application? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So um, previously, there was an in-ground swimming pool to the rear of, of the existing garage structure. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was in enormous uh, disrepair, so rather than to put the required funds into restoring it, we, we had it uh, uh, excavated and filled in. So within that area, half of it now has been removed totally. There used to be a concrete apron around the entire swimming pool. And a good portion of the concrete, let's say half of it, was uh, uh, broken up and disposed of to allow for the new uh, 34 by 34 garage proposed extension that's in the same footprint. So, so far as disturbing any, how uh, you say that, impervious areas or whatnot, uh, the calculations were provided also in the uh, attached sketch. And you can see it's not even, it's so marginal, it's on 2.3 acres. It's, it's, I think what less than less than a percent, maybe 0.44 percent or something like that. I'd have to refer back to the sketch. So essentially, I'm asking for relief so that I can. Well, with the, with the cars in the driveway, it's quite cumbersome, and uh, I have to move the cars out of the way to remove the snow shovel between them. I can't access my current garage because the parking situation I have in, in front of it are for my daily drivers, et cetera, and also in addition to other collectible cars that are deteriorating in the weather. So essentially I wanna protect my investment, be able to actually engage in my activities to, you know, that I've been looking forward to for 35 years. Um, and getting back to being able to go to some of these uh, car shows with some nice classic cars and, you know, uh, participate in the community. Uh, with, with the benefit of, uh, you know, the fruits of our labors here. And uh, also, you know, uh, not only just protect the investments, but you know, I, I can't maneuver my, my uh, what do you call it, snow, snowblower machine through everything the way it's set up. So it's, it's quite challenging now that as I get older, um, and, and I'd rather just have a, be able to contract a plow guy that can clear the driveway in a full swoop and uh, 
you know, keep the cars under uh, shelter and have some space for me to actually tinker on them. I do have a lift in, in my garage right now, but I can't use it because of the numbers of collectible cars I have. So when I bought the property, it had a pretty large garage, and that's what enticed me to move back to Nashua uh, after I uh, was it off of exit eight, now it's off of exit five. So, you know, with your concurrence, I'd um, uh, like to proceed further. If you have questions, I have some pictures of how the residence used to be when I acquired it in, under the bank foreclosure and how it's been improved since, and um, photos of the collectible cars in the driveway and others in the garage that I'd like to preserve and maintain, et cetera that uh, is any way uh, pertinent in your questions you may have. Um, with okay. that, I'd uh, <clears throat> any questions like to know if you have any questions on the, on the application. So I, I'm, I'm a little confused with the amount of overage. So if I'm looking at the calculations that are provided on the plan, and my question may go to Mr. Falk as well as to the applicant. Am I understanding correctly that with the removal of the existing concrete pad and with the removal of the existing concrete apron, uh, the net additional square footage that you're proposing is 44 square feet? Yeah, that's that's accurate. So that, yeah. I guess where... That, that was uh, uh, during the... Uh, permit process I had filed for the uh, um, to put in the foundation. So I guess what I'm, I'm trying to understand is if that's accurate, um, how does 40 additional 44 square feet get us from 75 square feet of existing coverage to 164 percent? Well, because that initial uh, concrete that was surrounding the, the a closed up swimming pool and the, the pool coping, et cetera, that wasn't covered uh, with a roof. Um, I'm told by the planning and zoning department that accessory uses for a covered structure. And so they didn't have any issues with me actually putting the concrete in the ground. They said, you can have a concrete patio, slab, whatever you want to do with it, but once you want to cover it, then that becomes an accessory use structure. Okay, and so, and so, and so that adds to the percentage that you have in question, sir. So, okay, maybe this is a question for staff. So is the additional square footage at issue only 44 square feet? Or is it, in fact, the total square footage of the proposed additional garage? Um. That's a good question. Um, I, I, don't. I I think their math is considering the additional garage square footage. Okay, but I don't know if their math right. so, is, uh, is relevant. The applicant stating that it's only 44 square feet of additional square footage. However, if I'm understanding this correctly, the new garage is 1,156 square feet. So I guess I'm just trying to understand if what we're looking at is an increase of 1,156 square feet or an increase of 44 square feet net. Well, it, I think I, it might be something in the middle. Well, I mean, it, it looks to me as if there is 1,156 square feet of accessory structure being added. Correct. Yeah, the, you know, that it goes where there is an existing concrete pad is not something that is part of our calculations. So that's what I'm trying to clarify with staff. So, it's, it's, so we're, this is not an additional 44 square feet. This is an additional 1,156 square feet. Right, well we have the existing garage at 960, garage addition at 1,156, for a total of 2,116 overall detached accessory use. The house is... Um, Twelve hundred and eighty-eight. So, you know, that's how we're getting the the overall one hundred and sixty-four percent over, because he'd be allowed um, basically five hundred and fifteen to meet the forty percent. 
Okay. So, uh, so the discussion related to the pool apron and the existing pad, that's all irrelevant. Uh, we we are looking part, at 1,156. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. That was only relevant when they allowed me to construct the 34 by 34 right. foundation for the sake of impervious materials. Right. I get it. Thank you. Mr. Shaw. But I think, I thought part of this is, though, the, what was the existing in-ground swimming pool, that would not, that is considered an accessory use, and we would calculate that area based on the footprint of the pool itself, not of the apron. So. Is that, well, first of all, is that correct? For an in-ground swimming pool, we would count the whole thing as an accessory use. It's a, it's a structure, even though it may be below the ground. It's still a, a structure that we count towards. I mean, you guys see numerous variances for above-ground pools, in-ground pools, so it does count towards the... So, so, why, so why, wouldn't, why wouldn't... Did the city no longer consider that to be an accessory use? Or because what I... Because I do think that perhaps the pool, the, the previously existing pool, was, was would have been a pretty large square footage, and it looks like that actually, to the applicant's calculation, might might be true. So uh, it looks like that looks like the in-ground pool was not considered as a previous existing accessory use part of the calculation. Right. I, I don't know how long a pool had been there for. Maybe the owner can. I, I can speak to that. Because, I mean, it may not have been counted or it may have been so long ago, perhaps a st staff of yesteryear didn't count it as accessory. So, uh, gentlemen, not only did I remove the pool from accessory use under my ownership, I also removed a cabana that used to be adjacent to said uh, swimming pool which I imagine would have also figured into accessory use. So I've eliminated a, a cabana. I think it was eight by 16 feet. Uh, the uh, older property records might show the exact dimensions, but it, it even had a 100 amp circuit breaker panel, sub panel in it. Um, it looks like the GIS map does reflect some sort of a small rectangular structure to the, you know, kind of straight back from the house adjacent to the pool so exactly that seems to be uh, so there were th there were two improvements we did to the property as I said it was quite unsightly and in, in extreme disrepair when I purchased it um, uh, and you see in in place of that swimming pool and cabana I'm I'm looking to do something that actually benefits me as a homeowner and my wife um, She'd prefer I get all the cars out of the driveway as well, if you get my meaning. Um, I can show you what the previous property before improvements looked like, what the street view is today, and which cars I'd like to protect. Um, I have those on 8 by 11 photos, if, if you would like me to pass them around. Will that, will that I, help I, you at all? I don't think that would be, be helpful. I mean, what, what, the interesting thing here is that at some point in the past, the accessory use uh, percentage was very high. And then you, know, you remove the pool, you remove the cabana, that brought the, the use back down, and now you're making, you want to apply to build a garage according to the city rules that uh, any change that you make that changes the accessory use structure uh, percentage, if it goes over the 40%, then you need a variance for it. So that's why you're here. And, and yeah, and to, to construct the garage for, I, I think I asked for re relief to construct the garage, although I don't believe the, the, the garage violates any setbacks or peak height restrictions well, or anything that, like that's that. That's certainly not before us right now. The only thing, the variance that you're requesting is for uh, accessory use area. So um, that's, that's the, what we're looking at. Right. You are, I assume you're stipulating that that it meets all the setbacks and, and peak requirements. So um, that's not before us tonight. I believe I'm asking for relief. The fact that, I don't know, maybe there's constraints on how large a garage can be, so. It, I, it's not that how large the garage can be, although sometimes we do. When, when you are um, exceeding something that the ordinance has a limit on, and the limit is 40% of your primary structure, for accessory, for detached accessory use structures. Um, 
and you are proposing to significantly increase the current accessory use area. Yes, sir. Which is why you're here, because now you're, you, what you have already is over the 40 percent, which, you know, is, it's existing, so that's okay. Um, I, I wish I could satisfy that with a 6,000 square foot house, but it's just me and my wife in a modest, humble ranch home. Sure. Uh, you know, and I, I think it would be quite we ridiculously get cases, burdensome we get in order like to be compliant the with the, you know, in the spirit of the ordinance, not everybody's going to ask for relief like I am. I don't know how many classic car collectors uh, yeah. reside in Nashville, but I sure would love to stay here and be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Courier. What is the proposed height of, if this were approved, or what is your proposed height? It would only be a one-story garage, whereas uh, this one that I have now actually has a floor above it. Um, so the, the height uh, being 34 across, it's an eight pitch, so the roof would be maybe 18 feet above the 12 feet, um, less than 30 feet with the foundation protrusion. Okay, thanks. Any other questions from the board? Not seeing anybody? Okay. Okay. You may have a seat, sir. Uh, anyone prefer to see any of the photos? I, I don't think so. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Uh, sir, come up, uh, give your name and address for the record, and five minutes. Tell us what you'd like. My name is Lawrence Arts, 7 Fountain Lane in Nashua. As a uh, fellow car collector and uh, antique uh, restorer, antique car restorer, I am in full favor of uh, of the applicant's uh, proposal. Okay, thank you. Anybody else in the audience? Uh, yes, ma'am, or sir? You both raised your hand. I assume you're together. Yeah, I'm um, Flavio Campos. I'm not far away from where my friend lives, so. Could you give your address for the record, please? The yeah, and, and I'm, speak I'm living at 1072 West Holly Street. Okay. I'm just a one house, or two house after. And I see, uh, when I pass by, I see all, you have some car. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited that he, he can, I hope he can to build another garage so he can put the other car inside the garage so he can clean this driveway much better. So okay, I, thank I you. Uh, Mr. Curry, did you get his name? Uh, no. Flavio Campos. Yep. Flavio Campos. Flavio Campos. Could you spell that, please? Yeah. Excuse me? Could you spell your last name, please? Campus. C A M P U S. Okay. Right. Like, like, like college campus. Okay. Except the same spelling. <laughs> I own the college. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this application? No? Okay. Uh, I don't see, well, say anybody on Zoom who wishes to speak in favor of the application? No. Is there anybody in the audience with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Not seeing anybody. Is there anybody on Zoom with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? And not seeing any there. In that case, I will close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Uh, Mr. Courier, your comments. Well, I, when I first got, the, uh, you know, our agenda, I saw like what, you know, a, a huge overage, probably the most I've ever seen, you know. Uh, and before getting the application, you know, I did a site walk, and I was like, oh, that's that's where it is, because I used to live out in this part of town, and you know, so there's a lot of properties. Uh, on West Hollis Street that extend way far back, and, and, and this is one of those. And I, I think the application, uh, I mean, a lot of the application, I think, doesn't speak to land use law, but it speaks to the applicants, you know, kind of wants and desires. But it's a very large lot, and it's a small house. We, we've seen this before. Uh, he testifies it's going to be a, a one story structure. It didn't seem to me that this would be a burden to a butters, like it would look like they're living next to, you know, uh, an Amazon warehouse or something. We haven't heard anything. 
and I don't think you'll see it from the street as he attests to. So uh, given the, the, the you know, 2.2 acre lot, the small size house, uh, the fact that there was a large pool that's now gone and what Mr. Shaw was saying, I don't think that was kind of given as consideration to this. I think that was kind of out of the calculation. I, I, I think it meets criteria and I'm in favor of it. But I'm interested to hear four other opinions. Thank you. Mr. McCurr. Uh I think I was in a similar place when I, when I first saw this. I, I thought the overage was excessive and uh, I, I was concerned, um, you know, just at the degree. Um, but in, in looking at it more closely, and, and I think understanding the application better, first of all, I, I do agree it's a very large lot, and I think that the impact of this addition on surrounding properties would, would be minimal. Uh, but what, uh, what, what I think really is decisive for me is that if the pool were remaining its in entirety and the proposal were, were to remove that pool, and replace it with this structure, we would be looking at a really de minimis increase. Uh, what appears to have occurred is that the pool was removed in the past, replaced, I believe, with a garden. The apron is still there. So, so now what we're hearing is that the rest of the structure would be removed as a part of this proposal. Uh, and assuming that that's true, that the pool apron would be removed, I really do see this as a relatively minor increase uh, in the overall overage. And so for those reasons, I support it. Thank you. Mr. Shaw. Yeah, I'm in support also. Uh, in fact, I think, actually, I think the cabana that was as well removed has not been factored in it at all. So I think, if anything, it actually might be technically a slightly less overall impact if it was going directly from the pool and cabana to this additional garage structure. So I think there's already been a history of a very similar, very large accessory use area uh, to this property. However, again, it's a relatively small house and an extremely large lot. And uh, the amount of total square footage of these structures is still relatively small for the entire lot. Um, and so I, I guess basically for some of the same reasons already stated, I definitely am in support. Thank you. Mr. Boucher. I'm also going to support the application, and I won't repeat what's already been said. Thank you. Yeah, and and I'll, <clears throat> same thing here is I, I support the application. Initially, again, uh, the overage did seem very excessive, but uh, as has been observed, um, if the applicant had not removed the pool and the cabana, then we would be looking at something a very small change or even a, a lesser uh, usage, so I'm in, in support of the application. Uh, somebody care to make a motion? Mr. Boucher, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the area variance for Peter H. Mancini, owner of 1080 West Hollis Street, Sheet D, Lot 41, requesting variance from Land Use Code Section 190-264 for accessory use area, 40% allowed, 75% existing, 164% proposed to construct and attach one-story 34 by 34 garage addition on the rear of the existing detached garage. It's in the R30 zone, Ward 5. We find that the variance is needed to enable the applicants to propose use of the property given the special conditions of the property. Again, um, as, as we discussed, the property is uh, 2.3 acres, which is a very uh, large lot, um, relatively speaking. Um, there is a very small house on the, on the property. Uh, it's a modest house, uh, a ranch-style house. And again, um, uh, the uh, other factors involved here is that um, we recognize that there was a pool that used to exist and was removed, and also there was a cabana. And so therefore, um, with these structures gone, uh, we find that uh, through discussion that there would have been really a, little, uh, a very small net difference um, of the uh, percentage, overage percentages. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that the pool had been removed some years back, and um, in most cases we believe that the pool and the cabana were not taken into consideration. Notwithstanding that, again, um, the special condition of the property, again, is the size of the lot, um, the small house, and the way the calculations are, are done uh, in, in our code. So we find that also that the benefits sought by the applicant cannot be achieved by some other method reasonably feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the variance. We find that it is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance 
We find it will not adversely affect property values surrounding parcels. We find that it's not contrary to public interest, and we find that substantial justice would be served. So again, I make a motion to approve the area of variance. And Mr. Shaw, thank you for the second. Any discussion on the motion? Oh, ready to vote? Okay. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. Mr. Mancara, how do you vote? Mr. Mancara votes in favor. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. And I, Mr. Lionel, vote in favor. It's five to nothing. Uh, congratulations. Your variance has been approved. Yeah. <laughs> Please, be, <laughs> Please be aware that there's a 30-day window of appeal. Uh, contact the Planning Department if you have any questions. Okay, moving on to case number five. Owners, uh, owners are Thomas and Justine Bergen. Address is 17 Winchester Street, sheet F, lot 956. Requesting special exception from land use code section 190-115 to maintain recently constructed driveway in a 75-foot prime wetland buffer of the Nashua River. This is in the R9 zone, Ward 1. Good evening. Uh, please give your name and address for the record and uh, walk us through your application. Uh, Thomas Bergen, 17 Winchester Street, Nashua, New Hampshire. My wife, Justine. Okay. So today, <clears throat> we're hoping to keep our driveway. Um, we pulled the permit. Um, we have four cars. We don't have enough room in, in our driveway to put all four cars instead of parking them in the front yard. Um, we put in a second driveway. We did everything right with the 12 feet on each one. Um, we had it surveyed first, and I guess there was an issue. It was too close to the water. We have it, had it surveyed again by the conservation water wetlands people. Um, it is a little, the portion of the driveway is a little too close to the river, and but it does not, not affect the river whatsoever. No water runoff. Um, there's woods, a forest area in between the driveway and the river. And again, it has no impact whatsoever on the river. Okay. Any questions from the board? Mr. Courier. Just to clarify, was this, uh, is, is this a new house or how No, it's an old it house. house. It's a, I have a picture if you want to see it. It's an old house with one skinny little driveway. And then we put another driveway on the other side. It's, yeah, it's 1985. Okay. It, and each driveway consists, again, I know the curvature, you can't have more than 24 feet of driveway space, so there's one 12 foot and then another 12 foot on the other side. Okay. The only question I had, I'm okay. all set. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? No. So uh, I guess I have just a brief question is, is when was this noticed? Well, it's, not too, it's a long story, but uh, we were having the driveway done, and apparently somebody made a phone call because when they did the driveway, they pushed some dirt in our yard. It wasn't in the river. It, was, it wasn't even close to the river. It was in our backyard. So to clear, before they were able to clear out the dirt, somebody called and complained to the planning board that I don't know what contamination of the dirt or something like that. I don't know what it was. But so again, we went through the planning board. It all passed through the planning board. They had no problem with it. But pretty much somebody dropped a dime that, you know, that's what Okay. Happened. All right, uh, you may have a seat. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody in the room who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Yes, ma'am, come up and uh, give your name and address for the record. My name is Lisa Law. I live at 25 Pelham Street. I just met um, Justine recently. Um, I've walked by her house twice a day, every day, walking my dogs. And if you go down to that neighborhood, okay, and see what they've done with their house and their property, they've done nothing but beautify the neighborhood. There is no damage at all to the river. In fact, she's cleaned up trash that was along the wooded area of the river because the city doesn't do it. I'd like to know when was the last time any of you guys drove, dro drove down there because most of the houses down there, their yards are trash. This yard was trash. This house was garbage until they bought it. If you guys are going to make a stink 
about a driveway, you all approved that house to be built in 1985. Well, I, let me comment that none of us. Well, I mean in the city. You work for the city. That's what I mean for the city. We're, we're a volunteer board. Okay. You work, still work for the city. You're still okay. part of the city. Are you not? Okay. Continue. The driveway is on a curve. Okay. The driveway goes this way. It doesn't impact the wood, the river, or anything at all. Okay. None at all. The woods are there. There's gravel, dirt, a little bit of gravel. Their driveway. What's the beef? Nothing's been disturbed. No wetlands been disturbed. Nothing. Okay. The person who dropped the dime has nothing better to do with their time because their yard's a mess. I know who dropped the dime. I'm not going to say their name, but I know who it was. They have nothing better to do. And I think you guys could have something better to do than to pick on somebody who's beautifying their, fam their yard and making the neighborhood look better. Because like I said, you guys really should take a drive down there. Really should. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Thank you, Mayor. Oh, Mr. Shaw, did you have a question? It's not so much a question as a, as a comment. And I just would like to clarify. The role of this board is a quasi-judicial board to provide relief from the land use code. We hear cases that get filed with the city. We don't choose what comes to this board. We don't decide who's done things wrong or right. There is code in there. I'm just, yes. please, first of all, you don't have the mic, and I am speaking. I apologize. Thank you. I'm sorry, but I take some offense to uh, this board being told we're doing certain things. This board is trying to carry out execution of a duty that is incumbent upon us in this city to provide relief for land use codes for applicants where they need them, much like these people here. And I appreciate that you spoke in favor, but I want you to know that if somebody does bring something to the attention of code enforcement, it's also incumbent upon that department to pursue and figure out what's going on. And in this case, unfortunately, there still was work that was done in the wetland buffer. And so the technicality is that something needs to be done to provide relief for this homeowner use of the property now with the incursion that they have. So that's all that we are trying to do. We're not passing judgment on whether people have done things wrong or right. We are trying to understand how they fit within the constraints of the law. So this is just my little educational piece for you and for the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so there's no more questions, no more <coughs> people uh, in support in the audience. Is there anybody on Zoom who wishes to speak in favor of this application? <coughs> Not seeing anybody. Is there anybody in the audience with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Not seeing anybody. Is there anybody on Zoom with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? And not seeing anybody. So, uh, could we just discuss it? Um, we got some wetland special conditions that we probably need to address yes. uh, in one form that's, or another with the applicant. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Bergen, uh, if you would just, uh, are you familiar with the nine? Mr. Chair, sorry, just. So just to, so we're kind of following the yeah. proper procedure, I'm going to make a motion to reopen a public hearing to the LL, the applicant to come back and speak to okay. the questions yes. uh, that we have uh, okay. for the so, criteria. Okay. And so second. Thank you. Thank you. And second. Uh, I guess you come. So it's just to reopen. The yeah, public to reopen. Okay. The, um, to address the, the special regulations. All right, so we're going to take a vote on reopening the, the yeah. public hearing. Uh, Mr. Mankara, how do you vote? Mr. Mankara votes in favor. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. And I, Mr. Lionel, vote in favor. Okay, so we are reopening the public hearing. Now, there are nine special conditions for the special exception, wetland special conditions. Are you familiar with these? Have they been shown to you? No. Uh, okay, so I'm going to read each one and you tell me if you agree to it. 
uh, um, or Mr. Shaw is going to give him a copy. So you could just actually, yes, just look through it and tell me if you agree to all of these. Okay. Although, if I understand, you, you've already done the construction, so uh, you're not making any further changes. Right. Yeah, I agree to these. And um, that's also, I don't know if you guys have the form. We had this, the property surveyed twice, once by our guy and then the town made us hire another guy. I mean, the total of like four thousand dollars. But each the, the I don't know what you call him, but the water survey guy, he's the one. He he wrote up all this stuff that said, um, um, how that there's a forested buffer between the property. Uh, there's no um, water drainage towards the river. Uh, you know, there's no impact whatsoever. Right. Yeah, we have the positive recommendation from the Conservation Commission. Um, so, and again, I, I, we weren't trying to pull a fast one here. It's just I, we we understand yeah. that, and that that's fine. It just for the way our no, I, I totally get way it. our rules go. You, we no. have to ask you if you agree to these special conditions. And I never knew too that you know we well, we've lived here for probably two years. We own this is our third. We have three other two other properties in Nashua. But I, I, we were never aware of uh, you're not allowed to touch anything within 75 feet of the water. You know, the realtor never told us. We just we didn't have a clue. Okay. So that that satisfies. Okay, okay you may have a seat. Okay. Now I will close the public hearing again, and open the public meeting. Mr. Mancara, your comments. Uh, I, I support the application. I, I think the, the driveways otherwise meet um, the town's requirements. There really is no other place that they could have put it other than within that 75 feet. Uh, I also know that there is uh, what appears to be town or city owned conservation land in between the property and the river itself. Unanimous support from the Conservation Commission without stipulation. So I support the application. Thank you. Mr. Shaw. Yeah, I'm likewise in support. Mr. Boucher. I'm also in support. Mr. Courier. I, I'm in support and just again noting that the house was built long before there were any wetlands laws in place. If, if the wetland laws were first, this house would either not be built or would be further away from the wetlands such that reasonable uses like a driveway wouldn't be uh, within the buffer. And I, you know, so I think they deserve some relief because the house was there before the wetland rules, and I don't think the driveway is creating any uh, impact to the buffer or the wetland. Thank you. And uh, I'm also in support of the application. Um, the incursion into the wetland buffer is, is minimal. Uh, somebody care to make a motion? Mr. Boucher, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the special exception for T Thomas and Justine. Bergen, owners of 17 Winchester Street, Sheet F, Lot 956, requesting a special exception from Land Use Code Section 19-115 to maintain a recently constructed driveway in the 75-foot prime wetland buffer of the National River. It's in the R9 zone, Ward 1. We find that it is listed in the table of uses. We find that it will not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. We find that it will not overload public water drainage or sewer or other municipal system. We find that all special regulations are fulfilled. We find it will not impair the integrity or be out of character with the neighborhood or be detrimental to health, morals, or welfare of the residents. Um, the special conditions, the wetland special conditions, uh, have been attested by the applicant that uh, he uh, has a pr he was will follow and has followed all the stipulations below. Um, and also, um, there is a um, conservation commission letter with favorable recommendations with no stipulations dated uh, August 3rd, 2021. So with that, I make a motion to approve the special exception. Uh, thank you. Mr. Shaw, for your second. Any discussion of the motion? Uh, ready to vote? Okay. Uh, Mr. Mankara, how do you vote? Mr. Mankara votes in favor. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. 
Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. And I, Mr. Lionel, vote in favor. Uh, so that's five to nothing. The special exception is granted. Uh, congratulations. There is a 30-day window of appeal. Um, please contact Planning Department if you have any questions. Are you? Okay. Moving on to case number six. The owner is Heritage Baptist Church of Nashua, Incorporated. The applicant is Pastor Larry Hilleman. Address 105 Lock Street, Sheet 41, Lot 49. Requesting special exception to expand approved non-conforming use by changing the school from grades 1 to 12 to K to 12. This is in the GI TOD zone, Ward 3. Uh, good evening. Uh, please give your name and address for the record and tell us what you'd like to do. Thank you, sir. I'm Heritage Baptist Church. I'm the representative. I'm Pastor, Pastor Larry Howman. We were approved here for our Christian school. We have a small school in our church. It operates in our church. And what I forgot to do is when I applied, I applied first grade through 12th grade. Last year, I hired a teacher that works for me. One of her siblings is going to be in kindergarten. He'll be starting school this year. The Department of Education said I needed to have a variance to have that adjusted to where it's, instead of a first through 12, it's K through 12. Two students are coming into the school in kindergarten. One of them is a sibling of one of the teachers that are there. There's no construction involved. There's no modifications involved. There's no parking issues that change, no traffic impact. It's just two students in kindergarten, but I needed to have it on my paperwork. That's Thank all you. I have. Yep, that's fine. Any questions from the board? Not seeing any. Okay. And there is nobody left in the room, and there, are, there is no uh, member of the public on Zoom. Therefore, I'm going to assume that nobody is speaking either in favor or with questions or opposition. Uh, so we can proceed to the <laughs> close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Uh, Mr. Shaw, your comments. Uh, this uh, seems to be as straightforward as you almost <laughs> possibly get. Change the one to a K and we're done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't see any, there is no obvious change or impact that use or anything so and this board's already seen fit to approve previously so yeah, yeah. totally good with it. Mr. Boucher. I can't say anything more than I, than I approve the application. I, I approve the. Yes. Mr. Courier. I'd just like to add that the school's been in operation for some time now and we haven't heard any problems with it. It seems to be functioning fine and I think this is a minor adjustment to it and I think it's worthy of relief. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Mancara. I also concur and support the application. And uh, Mr. Lionel also in support of the application. Would somebody care to make a motion? Yes. Mr. Boucher, thanks again. I'd like to make a motion to approve the special exception for Heritage Baptist Church of Nashua Incorporated, owner, Pastor Larry C. Hilleman, the applicant of 104 Lock Street, Sheet 41, Lot 49, requesting special exception to expand approved non-conforming use by changing school from grades 1 through 12 to K through 12. It's in the GITOD zone, Board 3. Um, I like, uh, we find that it is listed in the table of uses. We find that it will not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. We find that it will not overload public water, drainage, or sewer, or other municipal systems. We find that all special regulations are fulfilled. We find that it will not impair the integrity or be out of character of the neighborhood or be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare of the residents. So with that, I make a motion to approve the special exception. Thank you. And Mr. Shaw, thank you for your second. Any discussion of the motion? The only thing I'd say is I feel bad for the pastor that he had to sit through the entire meeting for <laughs> as simple and straightforward a case. Yeah, it was my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Years ago, I said fix this. So. Okay. Actually, he came in after, he was the last one that came in, we already had everything written up and cards uh, printed and everything, so yeah, unfortunately we had to have him come at the end, but we knew it would have been a quickie. Well, it's an evening entertainment. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot. Good. Okay, ready to vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. Mr. Mancara, how do you vote? Mr. Mancara votes in favor. And I, Mr. Lano, vote in favor. It's high to nothing. Your special exception is approved. Uh, be kind to those kitties. <laughs> okay. 
Thank you. So we you, have, you bet. Good night. Good night. Thank you guys. I know it's a long evening, but thank you guys. I appreciate you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, we have no uh, rehearing requests that I know of. Um, we have an agenda for the next time. Has everybody had a chance to look at it and see if there's regional impact? Does anybody see any regional impact? Uh, let me take a quick look. Yeah. I did not. I, I did not. Either. Um, yeah. I do not see regional impact. Okay, and I don't see any regional impact. Okay, so no, none of us sees any regional impact. So it's fine. We have minutes from June 28th. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes and are there any edits or corrections? Not hearing any, okay. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Mr. Shaw, second. Mr. Boucher. Uh, Mr. McCarra, how do you vote? Uh, Mr. McCarra abstains, I, I wasn't present. Sorry? I wasn't present for the meeting, so I'm gonna abstain. Uh, you're abstaining, okay. You're allowed to vote, but. Uh, I know, but yeah. I feel more comfortable. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. Okay, Mr. Lionel votes in favor. That's four uh, in favor and one abstention. Uh, the minutes are accepted. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second? Mr. Courier, thank you for your second. We are adjourned at 8.31. Well, it's there. Thunder. There's a line of thunderstorms coming through. Recording stopped.